Dawn lifts a thin mist from a flooded plain. A light body skates across lily pads on outstretched toes, each step a test of surface tension. The wings look wrong, bulked and hunched as if smuggling something fragile. A ripple, a shadow, and the bird crouches. From beneath those wings, tiny legs tuck and vanish. Predators pass. The family reassembles and moves on, a floating caravan of caution and intent. This is bird male parental care brought to a fine edge. Feeding, sheltering, ferrying. Among African wetland birds, it is the bird that raises the chicks alone, and the water hides as much as it reveals. Warm, shallow wetlands shape this life. Floating leaves turn to highways. Seed heads, beetles and snails become a traveling buffet. The bird's toes are improbably long, spreading weight across pads that would sink under anything heavier. Nests are hasty rafts woven from stems. Water level decides their fate. Chicks hatch precocial, eyes open, ready to run, already patterned for camouflage. Males guard narrow territories around nests. Females range wider. Fights are ritualized, wings raised, calls sharp, but brief. The season's clock is set by floods and drought. When levels hold steady, clutches appear again and again. The pattern here bends expectation. Females court, males stay. The anchor earns its title. A super dad among African wetland birds, the bird that raises the chicks alone. The African jacana. Here is the paradox. Why did evolution assign full-time parenting to the males in this species? The African jacana system looks inverted. Females are larger, brighter, and polyandrous. One female can hold a territory that overlaps several males, laying a clutch, often four speckled eggs, into each nest in turn. From that moment, most duties fall to the male. He incubates for roughly three to four weeks, rotating eggs to keep them warm and dry as rain and sun trade places. He broods the hatchlings for weeks more, shadowing their foraging, sounding alarms, and, when danger comes, performing the signature behavior that first startled researchers. At a call, the young sprint to him and disappear beneath his wings. He lifts, and their legs protrude like awkward tassels. This jacana chick carrying maneuver turns a vulnerable line of chicks into one compact, mobile unit. If the nest drifts or floods, he rebuilds. If a monitor lizard raids, he decoys. Females, meanwhile, keep searching for new mates and fresh nests within their range. The math is stark. Time spent incubating prevents a female from laying again. Time spent guarding keeps a male near resources his chicks can use immediately. Yet it raises a deeper question. In a world where predation is real, nests are unstable and food is scattered, why has African jacana parenting settled so firmly into this reversal? Evidence suggests several forces converged. One hypothesis centers on operational sex ratios and fecundity. In habitats where a female can produce multiple clutches in a season, her reproductive output rises if she hands off care. Male-only care, by contrast, sharply increases a male's success because each hour of guarding saves one clutch that would otherwise fail. The trade-off is risk. A male tied to a nest can be outcompeted for future mates, and a female moving between partners spends energy defending a broad territory. 
A second hypothesis maps ecology to behavior. Floating nests fail often. Predation is opportunistic. Safe platforms are patchy. Males that stay can respond within minutes to a leak, a gust, or a snake. Chick transport, Jakana chick carrying, keeps the brood together across gaps and thin pads and allows fast retreats. Here, bird male parental care is practical engineering adapted to a wetland that changes by the hour. A third hypothesis from sexual selection theory invokes reversal under polyandry. When females compete for mates and males control the limiting resource, parental effort, ornaments and aggression shift to females. Bright females and devoted males become stable. But scientists still debate the first step, whether ecology pushed roles first or mating competition did. Paternity assurance likely matters too. Courtship, timing, and mate guarding near laying mean a male's certainty is high. Investment makes genetic sense. None of these alone fully closes the case. Together, they suggest why African Jakana parenting endures, even as floods remake the map. Mid-season, a male stands on a trembling raft, rain stitching the water. A shape glides at the edge of cover. The call is soft, urgent. Three downy forms run to him and vanish. He rises, a bundle of legs dangling like reeds. The raft breaks. He ferries the brood to new leaves and starts again. Hours later, the female flashes through, checks and continues, patrolling a boundary that includes two other nests. The logic is visible and still untraceable. Some males lose everything to a night storm. Some females abandon a territory that went dry and pair anew. A few broods seem to have vanished between dusk and dawn, with only a scatter of feathers to mark the loss. Outcomes swing, yet the blueprint holds. In this bird gender role reversal, the costs and gains are not symmetrical, and that asymmetry is rewriting what we thought we knew about who parents and why. Evening prints the pads with silhouettes, the brood feeds, then tucks in, warm under a living roof. The question lingers above the waterline. Can being a good dad be a survival strategy? If so, the answer is not sentimental. It lives in minutes saved when a nest floods, in calories conserved when one parent stays put, in the way a wetland rewards quick repairs more than long chases. The signal moves through generations. A chick carried today becomes a male that will carry tomorrow. The superdad remains on station, and the mystery persists. Not a contradiction, but a design tuned to a place where land floats and the ground itself drifts.